Welcome everybody to Google Cloud Innovators in Telecommunications, and we're excited to have with us Uli from Vodafone. Uli, could you introduce yourself? Of course. Thank you for having me. My name is Uli Onich. I'm the CIO of Vodafone in Germany, and I'm accountable for everything which is IT related, right? So that means getting new innovation in, making the operations, doing, let's say, architectural reviews, and also moving to the cloud. Well, Uli, um, that's a huge responsibility, and you're talking architecturally and new innovations, and there's nothing newer than generative AI and the cloud. So what are some of your thoughts there? I think at the moment, Gen AI is very hype, right? If you enter a supermarket, you cannot also talk in the supermarket with someone of Gen AI. Um, you know, AI is not new, right? Um, we have a lot of AI use cases already since years in the system, right? Now, looking at large language models and also the generative AI, there's a big opportunity. But the always question, which is very important, you need to answer before you run into that, why you are doing that? And if you have a good answer on why you are implementing that, and what is the, let's say, the benefit of our customers or the agents, then you make a real value out of it. Well, so the why has to also do with the business too, but how are you guys setting things up so you can be quick to innovate, quick to fail, and, and not have it cost the business? Yeah, especially in that new area we are in, seeing is believing, right? So you need to have quick, quick inter, uh, interactions to see, to get it live and to get the experience with customers, with employees, but also with shareholders. And cloud is a big driver for that, right? If you move up your data into the cloud, have them really there, you can do a lot of things pretty fast. And I mean, within two weeks, you implement such kind of use cases and you see the value or you see the learning and then you switch it down again. Right? Well, doing that within two weeks, it used to take two months, two years, you know, quite a while. So there's a huge improvement already. And you mentioned something really critical before you even go with the AI side is the data. What have you done from a structured data, unstructured data, and brought that together so it is actionable and you can get to that two weeks? Yeah, so that was an important move we did years ago already, right? To say, well, we have a clear strategy how we move our analytical data to GCP, right? And how we uplift that from all markets, have a standard, and now, here is here's also learning what we had, right? First, we thought we need to structure anything before it can move. We, we get rid of that, right? We move the data into the cloud and structure it there and utilize it there. And if you are in the cloud and have, and it, it has, also some, have to have some guardrails, right? You cannot move just everything on the cloud and then you look at data privacy and everything else. You need to also be very sure that this is already done. And that takes time. It's, but when you have moved that and you have done that, then fast development cycles happen. So one of the things, I, I, CSPs have always been rich with data. Yeah. And what you just described really helps put you maybe at the forefront as opposed to the tail end. Yeah. Do you feel like you're at the forefront of data and Gen AI? No, we are, we, we are making good progress. So I would say, yeah, we are, we are, we are a forerunner, I would say. Yeah. Um, but I would... I would not overstate that, right? I would say we have good, we have made good progress, and there is more to come, right? And more to come means, besides the data, it's also important for us to get the processes, so the open digital architecture, the APIs, into such a, the same layer, because if you want to have the beauty of AI, you just need also to make sure that you connect to your rest of your systems and the APIs, which you just and especially open APIs, which you can use, makes you much faster on that. How are you getting this into the hands of both your employees and your customers, and what do you see as the benefits? Let's start with the customers, right? So how we make sure that they feel that they are not isolated or that their journeys are broken, right? I'll give you an example, right? What we did in two weeks, right? Let's imagine you have a problem with us. You start with our chat agent, Toby, right? And you write, I have a problem with my bill. I want to know more about my bill. And then you come to a point where the chatbot doesn't help you anymore, right? So then you pick up your phone and you call the agent. And now imagine the agent know exactly where you stop and take your conversation from there. And that's where large language model come into place, right? They summarize all the chats you did, 
into three sentences so that the agent can directly start from that point. That gives two values because customer save lifetime because, you know, it happens often, right? When, when you are annoyed and you call a call center and you have to repeat everything again, this is a beauty of... I'm, I'm still annoyed today because yeah. many companies that still happens. And so I've already given my credentials. Yeah. Having that understanding of me, not only yeah. why I'm calling in, but me as an individual and all that information come together in yeah. real time though. Yeah, exactly. That's breaking down a lot of silos. Correct. And that's, that's the beauty. And that's, so the customer appreciates it, the agent appreciates it, right? Because he can directly or she can directly start in that conversation. And now we are coming to employees, right? Because we open, let's say, the data, democratize that and, and make sure that people understand what kind of things we are doing. We are running such kind of IT accelerator, so where we bring people from different departments together and they are working on such kind of innovation and spread that into the company, right? Because they need to understand the power behind Gen AI. Well, understanding the power and being able to use it with simple interfaces. I don't want yeah. to have to be a prompting expert. Correct. How do you help spread that knowledge to get the most out of what you're doing? First is education, right? Because, you know, it's the same discussion we have on robotics, right? Does I lose my job because there's so much robotics on the process and digitization? So the reality is it helps your job. It's increased your productivity and it increases your time you're talking with your customers. Because for us it's important, the difference we are feeling in the future, imagine all processes are digitized and automated, what is your value proposition? It's the interaction, how you repair the relation with the customer. And Gen AI can play a huge role here to help, the, let's say, the agents to propose good solutions very easily in real time. Well, so if you think of that, you, you start to change the name of the game too, because a contact center used to be thought of as a a cost center and now yeah. it becomes a revenue generation. We've tried that, but I think it's always failed a little bit. And we're, we're seeing Gen AI come into play and we're starting to see, see successes. And what, what have you seen? Yeah, and that's, this simple use cases demonstrate the power which is behind that. And it takes a bit the fear that I lose my job, right? So, and that open minds to people, right? And then you can explore the growth potential behind that because you know that the first car is ever sale, sold by the sales agent the second car you're buying is sold by the service and if you have an excellent service and a differentiation and Gen AI or AI tools can give additional power to the agents to help our customers and in that fact also growth cases. Well that's pretty tremendous so a lot of benefits both on the customer side on the employee side What's the timing of all this? When, when does it kind of ramp up? So, the foundation is data, right? And your guardrails on data privacy, on security. And to be honest, we have also to think about when you are in a machine learning and a Gen AI stuff, how do we make sure that there is no hallucination and that there is no ethical stuff we don't want, right? So, how we make sure that? And that's a big question which is not fully answered. So what's our control mechanism behind? Um, but the foundation, technically, cloud, compute power, data, algorithms are there. We are in a perfect storm. So it's not a question, are we technically ready or not? It's now the question, how do we adopt? And that's the main question, how the company is able to adopt. And that's the, I would say the hardest piece, right? Because you need to culturally change the way we are working. So really the hard piece actually becomes the culture, I think. The easy piece, and it's not that easy, <laughs> it's been the technology. You guys have done a great job yeah. of laying the foundation yeah. and really setting yourself up for the future. And it's, and it's all about partnership, Ryan, to be very honest, right? We learn from each other. It's not how we compete, it's how we learn and how we generate new things, what people cannot imagine. Well, I tell you what, we really appreciate your partnership, and I know uh, we've been doing a lot of great work with Vodafone for some time now, yeah. and we look forward to it in the future. Thank Uli, you very thanks much. for joining us here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And that's it for now at Google Cloud Innovators and Telecommunications. Mm -hmm.